beyond the capital of Egypt during the reign of the famous king Aachen Aton, which is called Aachen Aton, lies two sets or groups of tombs. They are rock tombs cut in the rocks of the area here, the northern tombs and the southern tombs. As for the northern tombs, they were cut out 280 feet above the level of the ground. They belong to the high official and the noblemen who worked for King Aachen Aton. They belong to people like Pa Nahsi, Mary Ra I, Mary Ra II, Amazis, and Hoya. The tomb of Mary Ra II is one of six important tombs in the collection of the northern tombs of Amarna in El Minya Governorate. It's distinguished from Mary Ra I's tomb, which is bigger, as he held a more important position, being the high priest of Aton. His tomb is located on the other side of the valley. As for Mary Ra II, he was the royal scribe and the supervisor of the royal harem. Both jobs are sensitive and require talents. preserved its columns intact. There are two of them in the tomb, totally cut out in the rocks and form one unit with the rest of the tomb. The work in the hole was never finished. The western wall is barren from reliefs and paintings. The northern wall too, except for parts of a drawing that represents Akin Aton and Nefertiti rewarding Mary Ra. Only a part of the niche was cut out. As for the statue of the tomb's owner, it's barely clear. On the left side of the southern wall, there is a scene of Aachen Aton sitting in a simple kiosk while the queen pours him some wine. daughters are serving him. They are Merit Aton and another one who could be Market Aton. On the eastern wall there is a scene that is almost repeated in every tomb. It's the king rewarding Mary Ra with gifts composed of golden colors and other precious gifts. Here, the king and the queen appear on the palace's veranda and hand over the presents to Mary Ra II, who stands below, wearing a lot of colors. Behind the royal couple, the princesses hand their mother a new ammo of colors so that she hands them to their father. Around them are army troops and carriages and fence bearers. In addition to a group of foreigners, including a lot of Semitics and one or two Libyans. Below the scene, the harem of the house salute Mary Ra. On the eastern wall is the scene of the tribute of the foreigners. In it, the king and his family stand in an open kiosk while the foreigners bow in front of him. This is a very special scene, as it's the only time the six princesses appear together in any tomb in Amarna. Another special scene is the one on the northern wall. For the names of Aachen Aton and Nefertiti inside their cartouches were replaced with Semench Kara and Merit Aton. So this tomb was being made when the reign of Aachen Aton ended suddenly and mysterious political events 
followed his death. king and the bearer of the fan on his right side. He was also the supervisor of the palace and the head butler in Akhenaton's palace. He was indeed a very trustable and important dependent and very attached personally to the pharaoh. In spite of his high position, his tomb remained unfinished during half the time of his reign. The hall takes the shape of a long corridor. Its ceiling is vaulted at its southern end and almost leveled at the other end. The second hole is perpendicular to the first one and is similar in design. The niche has a seated statue of Amazis. It was brutally mutilated. In general, the tomb was excellently planned, but only some of the scenes were finished. On the upper half of the western wall, there is an important sketch of the royal visit to Aton's temple. In it, Akhenaton and Nefertiti, together with their daughter married Aton, are riding their chariot. They talk face to face, regardless of the safety of the ride. The surrounding soldiers were relieved accurately. It's noticeable that they are Africans and Libyans. Only the royal chariot was painted in red. The lower part of the wall shows the royal family sitting for lunch in the hall of the palace. On the western wall, we find that beautiful prayer in which Ahmos asks Aton for gifts and blessings for Akhenaton. The prayers goes as follows. May you give him a lot of jubilees and many peaceful years. Grant him what your heart desires as much as the shore's sand and the fish's scales and the cattle's hair. Let him stay here until the ostriches blacken and the crow lays eggs and the mountains move and the river flows south so that I can continue to serve this good god, the pharaoh, until he appoints me his donated grave. Amongst the collection of the northern tombs of Amarna is Pa Nahsi tomb. He was the chief butler in Aton's temple and the supervisor of the granaries and cattle and the supreme judge of Upper Egypt. The tomb is almost identical in its architecture to the tomb of Mary Ra I, as it's composed of a grand hall and the second one and a chapel. The first hall was badly damaged and ruined by the Coptics, who had turned it into a church. They have removed two of the four great columns and turned the false door in the northern wall into a font with steps as an altar. The columns have the capitals of the lotus flower. tombs showed us how the new life which Akhenaten chose for his new city was simple yet highly organized and focused on his pioneering call for the unity of one god, the sun, Aton.
number nine in the collection of the great southern tombs of Amarna is the tomb of Maho, who was the sheriff or the chief of the police in Aton city or Akhid Aton. Being aware of the danger of the theft of his tomb after death and seeing how the ancestors' tombs were robbed, he had used his police talents to choose that secretive location for his tomb and safety for the place of his eternal rest. Indeed, he succeeded in keeping his small tomb safe, not only during the political changes that happened so soon, but he has also survived the violation of the current sieves. The design of the tomb follows the style of the intersecting corridors, for its first hole intersects the axis of the tomb, then the inner chapel is elongated with a bit of deviation. The work in the tomb was never finished, as well as the carving in the niche behind. A staircase descends from that chamber. Its 47 steps lead to the burial chamber. At the inner wall of the entrance, there are reliefs representing the king and the queen and Princess Merit Aton in the presence of God Aton. Nefertiti and her daughter shake the rattle to the sun disk, while Maho kneels at the bottom. On the other wall to the right of the entrance, Maho kneels praying. On both the front and the rear walls, Maho receives rewards from Achin Aton for his loyalty in his service. Once in front of the palace, and in another scenes in front of the temple of Aton. The symbolic aim was to show that Maho, being the chief police, was responsible for the safety of the crown and the temple. The scenes that were drawn with black ink were being checked by the chief artist before getting relieved. This means that the scenes in black were left unfinished. Both the palace and the temple were painted in black and show the remarkable artistic capabilities of the Egyptian artist. The scene wasn't surpassed except by the scene painted in black of Mahu himself kneeling down. The chief police is seen followed by 15 policemen. They are the police of Aachen Aton city, led by a fan bearer. As expected, they all raise their arms praising the good ruler who constructs buildings for his father. He does that one time after another and for always, the good master. upper part of the wall in the chief of the police tomb, Maho is seen heading a police troop bigger than the one represented in another scene. The division is lined up in six lines, each with five officers. The accompanying text says, The police of the city of Achit Aton chant and cheer with these words, As long as Aton rises, he shall remain forever. The thousand rear wall of the hall comprises a very important and a unique scene that doesn't exist in all of Amarna. Obviously, it was painted specially for the chief police. At first, the king and the queen are seen riding with their daughter Merit Aton in the same chariot leaving the temple. It's noticeable how the queen is keen on talking to the king or maybe kissing him, while his head is not directed towards the driving directions. The princess takes advantage of that and pricks the active horses with a stick. This marvelous scene proves how far the artist was free in his representations and how accurate his observations were and his veracity in recording. 
The royal procession of King Achen Aton and Queen Nefertiti in Mahu's tomb was going for an inspection mission to the defense centers represented in a small fortress. Mahu is seen with his 15 officers running in front of the chariot. What's amazing is that the minister and the officer with inferior rank had to keep up with the royal horses, which they did with an apparent difficulty now that they weren't young and fit anymore. Maho expresses his untiring activity by all possible means, for he stands behind the royal chariot to bid them farewell, showing his loyalty. At the time he kneels in front of the troop which was supposed to run in front of the chariot. It's astonishing to see him keen later on being the first to welcome the royal couple when they arrive to their destination. What an excellent model of a chief of police. The southern end of the front hall comprises a series of amazing scenes which seem to reflect the daily activities of the police, like supplying police stations with provisions and doing inspections on the police stations which Maho supervised. We can't feel anything but respect to this chief police when we see him bringing along his pet dog and arresting criminals with the help of his officers who carry weapons, then bring on these prisoners in front of him while saying, May you mighty princes be kind to check out and inspect these men who were instigated by foreigners. It's believed that there was a conspiracy set to assassinate Achen Aton and that Maho terminated the attackers by bringing them to court. Maho had his personal carriage which enabled him to move around his centers rapidly. So if the police of our modern times are complaining from the exhaustion of work, they need to remember that the police of Ahed Aton did their job multiple fold. declared hostility against the cult of Amon, he found it inevitable to leave Thebes, the capital of Egypt, and to find himself a new pure land where he could establish his new creed without any trace of contamination by the old multiplicity of religions. So he chose that area that lies directly behind the south of Sheikh Said mountain, where the hills are far by miles from the Nile shore. He appointed the borders of his sacred area here with an equal amount of land on the west bank and he marked it by 14 reliefs inscribed on stele in the rocks. They are called the border stele. He bound himself with a great oath swearing not to cross the borders of his area forever. <laughs> 